Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help provide context for today's public affairs issues. Our guest today on Meet the Press is the author of the controversial study, The Negro Family, Mr. Daniel P. Monahan. His report, prepared when he was Assistant Secretary of Labor, at first was warmly praised, yet has recently been sharply criticized. Mr. Moynihan, a professor of political science, is now at Western University. He was one of the drafters of the nation's anti-poverty program, and he has just been appointed by Mayor-elect Lindsay to the New York City Poverty Task Force. Now we'll have the first questions from Mr. Moynihan from Lawrence E. Spivak, permanent member of the Meet the Press panel. Uh, uh, Mr. Here's a, here's a quotation, for example, from a recent article by William Ryan, a Harvard psychologist who criticizes your report in The Nation. And this is what he writes, quote, the implicit point is that Negroes tolerate promiscuity, illegitimacy, one-parent families, welfare dependency, and everything else that is supposed to follow. Now, that's the criticism he makes of well, your report. Now, how do you answer those I, charges? I, I can't, I'm not responsible for the fact that he can't read. Um, as, as E. Franklin Frazier said, and I quoted from him at some length, there is a lot of evidence that the Negro middle-class family, when it, when it gets its opportunity, gets a bearing, is if anything more stern, more rigid uh, than most. But uh, the evidence is simply clear. Negro Americans live like any other Americans, and when they're forced into the ghetto and forced into disorganization, they have no more better protections well, than anyone else. I'd like to ask you one specific question, sure. which the New York Times quotes you today as uh, saying. You say that 44% of the children in Harlem are illegitimate. Now, how do you know that? Those are statistics in the New York City Department of Health, sir. Ten, ten health districts in central Harlem the area with the, which the great American sociologist Kenneth Clark described in his Haru report as having undergone a massive deterioration of the fabric of society and its institutions, and right under our prosperous noses that happened. That hasn't existed for 50 years. That's happened in the last 15 years in this America, and we've been sitting around thinking things have been getting better, and they haven't been getting better for those children. And I think we, I for one, if you think, see what people can face for the civil rights movement in the way of sheriffs, in the way of howling mobs, in the way of the disapproval of their entire society. Well, I think, I, I would hope certainly I'm willing to face the disapproval of a few uh, white liberals from Boston who think I shouldn't raise the subject because it's impolite. Mr. Novak. Mr. Moynihan, your report, you say, quote, equality of opportunity almost ensures inequality of results, unquote. Are you proposing preferential treatment on the hiring of Negroes? I believe this country owes the American Negro his back wages, yes. Should the federal government uh, support preferential treatment for Negroes then? I believe that, I believe what President Johnson said in his Howard University speech, you cannot keep a man in chains for three centuries and take the chains off and, and say suddenly, okay, you're free to run the race of life with anybody else. They have to be made, people have to be given the opportunity to compete with effective resources. And I believe that we should make a special effort.
gender identity might be one of the most polarizing conversations that's happening on social media right now. In most countries, sex is defined as what you're physically born as, male or female. But gender identity can be much more fluid. A person can be born female and feel more comfortable or identify as male or vice versa. I've been seeing a lot of young people all over the world from gender fluid societies talking about their traditions online. This is Geronimo from the Native American Navajo community in New Mexico. Shea Francis Geronimo Louie, and I am Cherica Apache, born for Diné. I identify as a two-spirit individual. This is my backyard. Um, just a lot of trees, lots of cactus. There's some mountains over there. Geronimo identifies as one of the four sacred and ancient gender identities from his culture. We have masculine, 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 feminine, 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 masculine. Masculine and feminine is something that I gravitate towards both spiritually, mentally, physically, and emotionally. The word for masculine and feminine is nakle, someone who is male-bodied, has a feminine nature, or who also takes on the roles of a woman and man. I take it quite literally sometimes. I can dress as a female, I can dress as a male. And traditionally, you're supposed to tie up your hair in a tiel. So men's traditionally would be right here, and women's traditionally we would be somewhere up here. We wear bandanas. I know that I'm a male, and I can take on the gender roles of a female. I weave, I cook, I clean. 8,000 miles away in India's capital, Delhi. Gender has been more than just male and female for centuries. Hi, namaste. I am Leher. I am 23 and uh, I was not born in a female body. In 2014, the Supreme Court recognised a third gender. I was assigned a uh, sex male at birth and I changed my gender medically. However, uh, and not what in the Western terminologies you would call a trans woman or a transgender. In India, we're considered third gender or the sacred gender that has the power to bless or to curse. We're regarded as highly sacred and respectable. Gender has never been binary in India. It's always been very, very uh, fluid, especially in Indian mythologies. We have scriptures that describe more than 20 to 28 genders. We have story of Shikhandi. Shikhandi was assigned female at birth. However, the person transformed themselves into a man to fight the battle of Mahabharata. Over in Australia, transgender people have had different names among Aboriginal communities. Kai identifies as a brother boy. So a brother boy is a person that's been born female, but has a male spirit or masculine spirit. Our understanding of being is so much more than a scientific definition of what is XX chromosome or XY chromosome. We can coexist, but doesn't mean that you should perpetrate hate and violence onto people that don't necessarily believe in the way that you believe. However, Kai's journey hasn't been easy, as he still faces discrimination in his own community. As someone that was born a woman and done women's stuff, and then transitioning into a man, you know, it's um, quite difficult at times to find your place as a person within my culture. And I think, yeah, I'm still on that journey. And for many communities, the history of gender fluidity was lost with colonialism. Sister girls and brother boys, history is difficult to document because of the effect of colonisation. There's been a lot of shame and stigma. Pre-colonialism time, gender roles were actually widely accepted amongst my people and our tribe. Um, these individuals who were called two-spirit were widely respected when colonialism started to happen. A lot of our people died and were murdered, and so a lot of the teachings and understandings of these people were lost, or assimilation, religious conversion, all contributed to the idea that 
Tewsbury individuals were bad people and they needed to go away. I face a lot of discrimination. It hurts my feelings. Leha also believes that colonization has meant there's less acceptance of gender diversity in India. Colonization uh, is what has corrupted the mindsets of uh, Indian folks that today are maybe transphobic or homophobic. Increasingly, the question of gender identity is becoming much more than how you choose to self-identify. It can decide whether or not you can access biologically divided spaces like toilets and aid shelters and some sports. But the question of who should have access to these spaces is one of the reasons why questions over gender has become so polarised in Western society. Yet some people question the idea of gender and believe stereotyped ideas around masculinity and femininity are limiting. And in some other parts of the world, the idea of just male and female have been seen as an oversimplification 